Right, here we go. Artificial intelligence has reached Adorama TV and I've been replaced, or at least my script's been replaced, because I asked a chat AI bot to write me a script for Adorama TV in my style. And it starts right now. Hi everybody, I'm Gavin Hoey and welcome back to Adorama TV. Today we're going to be creating dark and moody studio portraits with a dramatic lighting style. I never have a script and I think it's going to show and I've never said those words. So I can actually interact with the AI chat during the photo shoot and I'm definitely going to need to do that because, well, why didn't it mention getting a light set? Let's get a model in and let's get shooting. Actually, I won't bother asking it that. Let's just do those things. Back to the script. We're going to be working in the studio today and we've set up a dark coloured seamless background for our subject. To add some drama to the images we'll be using smoke machines, coloured gels and studio strobes. One thing the chatbot has failed to mention is to introduce the awesome model and today I got the amazing Sophie! Sophie's going to be the model for this photo shoot. Back to the script. Here we go. Section 2 is the main light. Our main light for this photo shoot is a spotlight. We've positioned it low and to one side of the subject to create strong shadows and highlights. I'm going to start with the obvious question, what sort of light? And after a little bit of a wait, we have our reply and the answer is not very helpful. It says either a speed light or a studio strobe could be used. Brilliant. Ultimately, the choice between the two depends on whether the individual needs such things as mobility, power, versatility, and the equipment you have available. And that is genuinely the best advice. What was the next bit? Light position. So it doesn't give me a lot of information in the script on low. Should low be, I mean, is, is that low? Is, is that low? What's, what is low? I guess a good question would be, from the model's point of view, is it lower than their eye height or is it higher than their eye height? So let's, let's go and ask. The key light should typically be positioned lower than the model's head to create a dark and moody look. This is generally a bad idea, but there we go. Well, that's as low as it goes, so that's as low and it is lower than Sophie's head. Okay, uh, position to the side. Right, I think we should take a test shot and see how this looks. I'm sorry about this, Sophie. I think this is going to look terrible, but that's what I'm told we'll have to do. Yeah, I mean, it really doesn't look... <laughs> that's terrible. Okay, um, it didn't say where in the side to put it, so I'm going to have a little bit of artistic license. I'm going to put it more behind you like that. Okay, Sophie, let's just try that again. Okay, well, we've got the shadows that it wanted. Uh, Sophie, can you just look a little to your side? Yeah, okay, that's that's pretty good. I mean, it's not, it's still terrible, but that kind of works okay. Right, let's go back to the script. To add some depth to the images, we'll be using a softbox as a fill light. We'll position it on the opposite side of the main light, and that'll help to reduce the shadows and add some detail to the image. Yeah, I mean, that's generally true. Again, it doesn't say about height, but I'm going to put it literally the opposite side. So that, to me, looks like the opposite side. OK, I'm going to pop this near your chin, Sophie. So I'm at f8 for my main light, so I want this one to be f5.6. OK, great. You're looking at the wrong light, and, and that's the right thing to do. That's, that's where I would look as well. You'd look towards the softbox, but chatbot said that that was the main light, so if you look over, that's the way. Actually, you know what? I think you're right. Doing the wrong thing is the right thing to do with this setup. So yeah, look towards the softbox more than the main light. I think that's fine. For an extra layer of drama, we'll be using coloured gels to change the colour of the lights. We'll be using a deep red gel on the main light and a blue gel on the fill light. Ooh, okay. These colours will complement each other, not sure they will, and add a powerful, intense feel to the image. Well, it'll be powerful and intense, not sure that's a good thing, however. 
So I've asked the chat AI for some alternative colors if I'm not keen on the red and blue, and it's come back with some suggestions. So additionally, you could consider using complementary colors to enhance the overall look of your image. For example, you could use blue gel on the key light and a warm orange gel on the fill to create a striking contrast. Overall, the color combinations will depend on the specific look and mood you're trying to achieve. Don't be afraid to experiment with different combinations to find the right look for your images. That again is really good advice. There's a chance it might affect the exposure because those gels aren't quite as dense, but we'll take a little test shot at the same settings, see what we get. Here we go. And for me, that feels so much better. I'm much preferring that over the original color choice. Segment five, shooting the portraits. Apparently that's it, we're done. Now is the time to shoot the portraits. We'll be working with our subject to create a range of poses and expressions that capture the dark and moody feel we're after. We'll be adjusting the lights as we go, thank goodness, to make sure we get the perfect shot. Yes, we will. Okay, I guess the question is, what should I ask my model to do? Let's ask the chat AI. So it's come back with quite a range of suggestions for Sophie. So uh, let's just go through a couple of them. It wants poses that convey mystery, moodiness and depth. Ask your model to stand in a strong, confident stance, strong and confident stance, with their shoulders back and their chin held high. The use of props such as a hat, a coat, an umbrella. Can it... What are we gonna do with an umbrella? Encourage the model to use body language that conveys a sense of moodiness or mystery, such as looking away from the camera or covering their face partially. You got that? <laughs> Sophie, are you ready? ready? Got your hat and your coat and your umbrella. No, we'll get one of those for you. Don't you worry. Here we go. Let's just see where we're at and then change it around. Just as the AI script said, I am gonna fine tune the lights as we go through the shoot, which is what I would do anyway, but I'll try and keep the general feel of the lighting that it originally suggested. Why have you got an umbrella? It doesn't make any sense. Why have you got an umbrella? It's, it's, there's no logic to it. Let's lose the umbrella. One thing we haven't used that was quite specifically mentioned at the beginning of this, and remember this is my style of shoot, was smoke. So let's go ask the chatbot, where's the smoke? So it's come back with some suggestions and mostly they are suggestions about how to use a smoke machine, which are all very useful, but they don't tell me how to use it to create interesting pictures. I think the last bit's the most useful. By using a smoke machine in combination with creative lighting techniques, you can create images that are moody, atmospheric and memorable. Experiment with different techniques to see what works best for your dark and moody studio portraits. And again, that's the really good suggestion is experiment, particularly with smoke, because it's almost uncontrollable. So whilst the smoke machine is warming up, I've just moved the lights around a bit and really embraced what the chatbot told me to do. So I have put the main light on a lower light stand, so it's way below Sophie's head. I put the other light directly opposite in a softbox. So what chatbot failed to mention was you can add smoke to any scene, but if you don't light the smoke, you won't see the smoke. So, sticking to the same principles as we had before, I'm gonna shift this around. So I'm gonna take this light a bit further back so it is behind the layer of smoke and hopefully will give us a bit of illumination. Now, even though this isn't going to light anything on the front of Sophie, it is gonna light the smoke around us and that should give us a bit more drama and mood. It's got a mind of its own. Right, let's keep going. A lot of things that the chat AI hasn't quite got right, but one thing it has got right is it constantly says, 
experiment, experiment and experiment. And that is perhaps the best piece of advice that anyone or any AI can actually give you. Remember, this is the very early days of AI. It's got a long way to go, but it really got some things pretty wrong. Like, for example, you wouldn't put your key light right down here unless it was Halloween. But there was a lot of things it got right. Experimenting with lighting position and colored gels, for example. It even knew that I love to use smoke in my pictures, which is kind of weird. It also wrote an outro, which we haven't done, so let's do that. And that's it for today's photo shoot. I hope you enjoyed this dark and moody studio portrait session and that you learned some new techniques for creating dramatic lighting styles. I bet you didn't. Until next time, keep shooting and keep exploring. Hmm, that's not how I end my videos because if you watch my videos, you know I'm going to tell you to click on that subscribe button and click on the bell icon. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks, 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 thanks for watching. What was that?